Well, hello, everybody. Today, I'll be commenting on Neville Goddard's 1969 lecture, The Bible, Your Biography. And while I do, enjoy the beautiful clouds of the Fuji area of Japan. Neville says, When I tell you the Bible is your biography, I'm actually saying that you are God, and I mean it. We are told in the 82nd Psalm, I say, You are God's, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like any prince. So I mean exactly what the psalmist said, that you are God's. Most of us probably had the idea that God is something outside of yourself. But what if it is as Neville says? How would it feel to know that we are the God's we've always been looking for on the outside? Neville goes on to tell a letter he received from an 82-year-old lady. She said, I'm returning your latest book, The Law and the Promise. I read the 156 pages and 40 stories told about the promise, and no credit was given to God. Not one who received the answer to their prayers thank God. It is a godless book. But Neville doesn't criticize her, for as undoubtedly, like Neville's own mother and father, they had their own strange and wonderful concepts of a God on the outside. And so if she feels that way about it, nobody can blame her. But Neville, he identifies God with the human imagination. By identifying the two and making them one, I rubbed out the vision that has plagued man. For we are told, all things were made by him, and without him was not made anything that was made. And you come to discover that you can imagine yourself to be what you want to be. And if you remain faithful, loyal to that assumption, it will externalize in your world. So as Neville saying, find it in yourself, test it out, no matter how many times it takes to prove and break the influence of this ancient concept of God. And Neville tells of meeting the late William Blake. Although he died in 1827, Neville tells how he met him in the heavenly spheres, and he said to Neville, Stand still, now fall backwards and let yourself go, no restraint, just fall. And Neville obeyed him, and he fell like some interstellar star falling through infinite space. And when he came to, he saw a scintillating being, this heavenly creature, human and yet not human. It was all light, all fire, and the heart was like a living ruby. And as he looked at it, Neville realized he was looking at himself, and he realized the whole vast world of man was encased within him. All nations, all races in the world were right in this body, and as he looked, he felt himself crystallize, and back in the world of shadows once more, what you call reality. So as Blake has said, all that you behold, though it appears without, it is within, in your imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. And now, Neville knew these words from his own personal experience, and so too you will one day. And although it may seem that people have died in this realm, like Neville, you too can connect with other great minds, for we are all one and interconnected. Just as Neville teaches, it is all states, states that we can pass in and out of, And as you enter these states, they externalize into your world. So you live in these shadows until you're resurrected. And in closing, Neville says, You will continue your journey for a little while, telling the story as you encountered it to those who will listen. And then, when you take off your garment this time, you take it off for the last time. You will never put it on again. There is no garment of flesh in the resurrection. His words make it seem as though reality is but a dream. You stay lucid always, where you dwell in your true reality beyond body, mind, space, and time, from where dreams are born from. Now, let us go into the silence. Good. 